This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 197 of the Stable Scoop Radio Show. Baby Geeks, please support our sponsors as they make this show possible. Equestrian Collections for all of your equestrian shopping needs. Equity Manufacturing, home of the coolest manure fork ever invented. Kentucky Performance Products, scientifically proven supplements for your horse. And Draper Equine Therapy Products, made in the USA for you and your horse. Find them all at StableScoop.com. Welcome to the Stable Scoop. With weekly shows delivered right to you. With Helena and Glenn the Geek, live from the stable, it's every week. We bring you the news through hail, hot water, while using their tails as their own fly swatters. So sit on down and laugh till your poop calls. It's time again for Stable School. Stable scoop, stable scoop, stable scoop. I am Glenn the Geek. And I'm Helena B. And you're listening to the Stable Scoop Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. Well, Helena, we have a lot to do today on the show, so I think we're just going to get right to it and we won't do our idle chit chat this week. We're not, because we're going to have some babies. Babies. We're talking babies. <laughs> we're talking technology. We're talking technology and babies. And what, yeah. you know, what more could you ask for? But first, I have an announcement to make for the Horse Radio Network, and that is very exciting. I'm we, excited about I it. I know. We have, uh, we have some things coming up on some of the different shows that are going to be some changes. And we're specifically today going to talk about the eventing and dressage shows. Uh, Chris, who has hosted those shows for three years, is going on to do other things, and we are going to be having some new hosts on those shows, and we thank Chris for all the time and effort she's put into those shows and to build them to where they are, Uh, and now we have some exciting news for you. We can announce who two of the hosts are going to be. There'll be two new hosts on each show. Uh, but on the eventing show, it's a comeback of, of uh, sorts. Samantha Clark, who used to host the 2010 radio show with me, The Weg Show, is coming back to be one of the co-hosts on the eventing radio show. I love Samantha. That's the most exciting news I know. of the whole year. I she was so awesome. I'm you, really excited about that. She really. used to come on our show on a regular basis here. And, and she's a good person, too. She yeah. has just one of those infectious smiles and positive outlook. She's a really good – I'm so happy that she's back with the horse Radio network. And of course, she's now affiliated and is a writer for Eventing Nation. She has her own blog over there, and Eventing Nation has really become the eventing site that all eventers go to to get news. Uh, and uh, so she, she's going to be, we're excited that there's that tie there as well. And then um, on the, we're really excited about the Dressage Radio Show because a good friend of ours and who's a regular contributor to Horses in the Morning because she comes on once a month and gives us recipes is now going to become a co-host on the Dressage Radio Show and her name is Reese Koffler Stanfield. She is a Grand Prix rider. She's a, an instructor, a coach, so well respected in the dressage world. And she was a communications major in college. So this is a natural fit for her. She's very excited to get going and be, becoming one of the co hosts on the dressage radio show. And perfect. These, yeah, it's just perfect. And she is the loveliest, nicest person you ever meet in your life. She, I mean, she comes on the morning show and does recipes. That gives <laughs> you the kind of idea of what kind of personality she is. Yeah, she'll bring a lot of fun to the show. And we're really looking forward to, they're going to be changing up the shows a little bit in that they're going to be doing more segments. They're going to be making them a little more light and and they're going to be providing more education. They're really going to be gearing them more to the amateur rider than they were before. So there's going to be a lot more information, a lot more tips, a lot more training advice in them. So you can look for them to be changed. We're calling it the new dressage radio show and the new eventing radio show. So they'll all be starting this week and next. So you can look for those. Those changes coming up, but I just wanted to welcome them to the family. And let's take a break here. I had a, I had a minute to talk to uh, Joseph from Equity Manufacturing, who had another tip for us. So let's get to him, and then let's come back and talk babies. And we're talking the cutest darn babies ever. Well, hi, Joseph, and welcome back to the show. Well, thank you very much, and congratulations on your move to Florida. It yes. seems to have gone very smoothly. In fact, I, I'm not quite sure how you were able to pull off 
a multi-state move with horses and everything without all that anxiety, but somehow you did. Well, yeah, you know, we've moved a few times, <laughs> so I think that helps. <laughs> but you know what we did, and, you know, you guys have a solution for this. What we had to do, because we're leasing this place for a couple of years, and but at the end of the couple of years, what we have in the contract is that we'll probably do, we'll probably buy it. We'll do a lease, it, it'll become a lease to buy. Right. So, but when we moved here, you know, the new headquarters of the Horse Radio Network, we didn't want to necessarily put up all wooden fencing and have a permanent fence out there that we've just spent tens of thousands of dollars on that right. we can't take with us if we leave, you know, that we're basically giving the landlord tens of thousands of dollars worth of free fencing. So what we did is we put we put up uh, a tape fencing and it we, with with wooden posts in the corners and the T posts, the metal T posts for the main part of the runs of the fence. Now, you have a solution that I wasn't aware of with with one of your products that we could actually convert upgrade yeah so tell us about that well i did see the photos of your field guardian electric fence and and it uh and it looks great and uh and i understand that they're they've been a terrific company to work with and that's that's really nice to find um in the horse industry um and since the portability of the fencing was important to you just putting up straight electric tape on T post is a pretty good way to, to build a fence because it's fast and it's and it's inexpensive. But and it's in portable. Future, we could take it out if we wanted to. Right. And and that's yeah. exactly right. Yep. But if you find that you want to make it a more permanent fence, then we make some accessories that let you take what you have, which is the T post and the wood anchor post, and utilize them in an upgrade. Okay. We called our fencing Equifence, although now it's Equity Fence, and it combines field fencing, which is mesh fencing, which can either be field fence or non-climb, um, with our Equity Brackets, which are a, a bracket that mounts on the top of the T-post, and it makes a low-cost permanent fence designed especially for horses. The main feature of it is a vinyl sight line that you can add to the top of the T-post, where normally to install field fence for horses, and this is a horse installation rather than a cow installation where you can just put a field fence and don't worry about it. But for horses, you would need to use wooden posts so that you could mount a wooden board to the top of the mesh fence. Right. And the advantage down of the here, board... i got to tell you, go Joseph, down here, everybody in our neighborhood has the three-board wooden fencing, but they all have the no-climb or the field fence inside of it inside as of part it. of it, yeah. Yep, yep, but to keep the small small critters inside. Right. Well, the advantage of the board on the top is that your horse can't push down on the top of the field fence to try to get on the grass on the other side. And, and boy, do they have, do that. <laughs> yeah, they do, exactly. You have that eight-foot distance between the T-posts, and the horses just can simply push down. And if you have electric on the top of it, that works for a while, and then your electric doesn't work, and then the horses push down on it. Well, if you have that wooden board on your field fence, they can't push down on it. And so it maintains the strength and the integrity of your field fence. Um, the other advantage is, of course, you have a sight line. And, and any time you have low light conditions, it's nice to have something big and wide like a six-inch board that a horse is going to be able to see. Well, now I'm looking at your uh, equity uh, vinyl rail mount, which is what we're talking about. And what this is, right. is, is it, it's a mount that goes over top, so it provides protection over top the T-post. Um, and you can, then it has slots in the side where you can put in. Now, could you put in vinyl rails and wooden rails or just vinyl rails? Well, in our particular case, we suggest vinyl. Okay. And the big advantage of our adapter is to build a quality field fence installation, you would normally have to use wooden posts to be able to nail your wooden sight right. line, right. right? Right. The problem is with T-posts. How would you attach a sight line to a T-post? Yeah, There's the, virtually the no rail, way to yeah. do it. There, you got it. So the, the, the beauty of T-Post is that they install really easy and they don't rot. Um, so what we developed was the bracket that you're talking about, which fits on the top of the T-Post and allows you to slide a vinyl rail, which is the same PVC rail that's used in a white PVC rail fence. We, we suggest PVC for all the reasons that PVC fence manufacturers do. 
is that it, it doesn't rot, it doesn't need to be painted, it's very lightweight, and it only costs slightly more for one rail of PVC than it does for wood. So, so we, we built it specifically for vinyl. Um, and this gives you the chance to take a fence like yours and say, okay, now we're going to put field fence up because we want to keep the critters out, but we want to have the tops of the T-post protected so that you, there's no impalement issue, and we want to have that sight line so the horses can't reach over the top of it to get the grass. The total cost of this is about $4 a lineal foot, so you only add about $2 to the cost of what you have there. That's a very inexpensive highly durable, highly visible fence. And since it's a more permanent installation that you have, perhaps there'll be one in yours and Jennifer's future. Well, you can find the vinyl, vinyl rail mounts, hard to say. You can find them at equitymfg.com. That's equitymfg.com. And they can buy them right on that website, right? Uh, yep, that's yep. correct. All right, thank you very much. If you remember a while back on the show, Helena, we talked to the people from the very lovely people from Feathered Gold Stables. And at Feathered Gold Stables, they do gypsy vanners. And you know that that's on my bucket list. I want to have a gypsy vanner that I can drive around the neighborhood someday with the big flowing manes and the feathers. They're, you know, they're like little draft horses. And you know how I like draft horses. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can't wait to someday own a gypsy vanner when I'm rich and win the lottery. But (laughs) uh, Feathered Gold put me on their mailing list after they came on and they've been sending out these emails of all the babies they've been having because they're, uh, they're they breed the cutest babies ever gypsy fanner babies are just adorable so i thought we had to have them back on to talk about their babies and i know you love baby talk i do love baby talk i, I love baby looking i love baby looking <laughs> And we're talking babies that come out with feathers on. You know, how cool is that? Mm-hmm. So let's get Denise and Derek on from Feathered Gold Stables, and let's just gush over babies for a couple minutes. And if you want to follow along, go to featheredgold.com. Well, hi, Denise, and hi, Derek. Hello. Hi, Glenn. How are you? So good to have you guys back. I've been getting these emails from you, and I love your emails. I love getting emails from, from a company that, when they send them out, is just pictures of babies. There's no writing, no text, just this baby was born and with 50,000 exclamation points and the name and then baby pictures. Those are the best emails <laughs> to get right there. Well, Let I'm glad me, you enjoy them. Yes. And you guys have had a, uh, the cutest babies ever. Tell us, you know, tell, uh, Denise, tell us how many you, you've had of these, of these cute babies. We've had eight foals this year, um, and we have one more to go. We're going to have a total of nine. Wow. And, and of course, you know, we, as we mentioned, we're talking about Gypsy Banners. And the reason that uh, Helena is so quiet is she's now looking at baby pictures, and we are not getting her back. No, I'm decided. I've decided. <laughs> I think I want three. I'm I'm torn between uh, Zeus, feathered gold Zeus, right? Um, yep. And who? I have a stall for him already. Can, does he need his mama? I mean, he was just born, right? So <laughs> yeah, yep, she can come um, too. Three days old. Well, and, well oh. and she might like a stall. They do like having their own room, you know. <laughs> yeah, the Hennemer. And then, um, but I also like. Uh, Black Pearl. Now, I know she's going to be black, but she's got this really cool gradient type coat. It's sort of darker on top and it fades down to a light gray and these fancy socks. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. And Helena, she's really soft too. She's she looks extremely so- soft and fuzzy. Yeah, you can tell by that. She is and cuddly and she loves people. I had visitors here this morning and She's, she and Zeus both are two that will come running right over to get attention, just absolutely adore being petted and played with and messed with. Um, I think they'd come in the house if we'd let them. Well, I wanted to ask <laughs> you about that. They come in my house. I wanted to ask you about their, <laughs> their dispositions as compared to other, you know, other foals from other breeds. But first, I, if you're putting in which ones you like, I have to say which one I like. I like the latest edition, Feathered Gold, Impeccable Impression. By the way, terrific name. And I have never seen a baby come out that hairy. Oh, my God. It was hairy to start. Yeah, yeah that's he is. Sure. Go ahead, Derek. When, when, the, when that foal was born... Um, we were in the stall um, checking them over and um, drying them off a little bit. And I told Denise, I said, this is incredible. I can't ever remember seeing a horse that had a foal that had, you know, uh, feathering on the on the seat that was almost three inches long already. 
<laughs> it's just, it was amazing. And that one's very painted uh, color, black and white. Yes, yeah, yes, very, he is. Very, oh my God. very well yeah. marked and every. Well, now, Derek, do you guys look for when when with these babies, uh, with Gypsy Vander babies, are you looking for good paint or you know, obviously they're all painted. Uh, it appears there are there solids. Sure, well, sure, there are solids. Gold, well, in feathered gold, black pearl, the one Helena was looking at, that is a solid baby. Um, one of our solids from this year. So there are solids. Um, this year we seem to have quite a myriad of coloring. Um, if you look at the different full pictures, we have paints and we have solids, but not only do we have the paint pattern, we have red and white paints. We have a buckskin and white paint this year and, um, and the black and whites, which are the traditional color that most people think of when they think of a gypsy horse. Uh, the buckskin and white. Now, is that the one who's yet to be named? Yeah, she, she doesn't have a name yet. Um, the name has to fit the horse, personality-wise and everything. And sometimes, as Derek knows, I struggle and I wait until the name comes to me that fits the personality of that horse and <laughs> the look, the build, and everything. And we keep calling her Honey and Sweetie because, well, you can tell by looking at her, she is very sweet. And But um, she needs a better name than that, I think. We're working <laughs> on it, yeah. But yes, It'll come to you. I like that, life. though. That's nice that you wait to see because it does when it when it comes to you it really just hits you right over the head and it's it fits so that's fine well you know what well I want to know when you name her because she the fact that she doesn't have a name makes her even more endearing to me <laughs> maybe I'll take her <laughs> all right if well, you're ta- if you're naming based on that then where did how did Zeus get his name well Zeus is actually the largest bull we've ever had born here he's um extremely big. I I believe he will go over 16 hands, which in this breed is unusual because they are a small draft breed with an average height of 14.2 hands. I do think he's got maybe a Clyde Stiller Shire throwback gene. Mm -hmm. And his um, name, he was probably about a week old when he got his name, but came from the Greek god Zeus. And it it just fits him. Overall, um, we toyed with other names and that one just stuck. And and for those that don't remember your Greek history, uh, Zeus is, is the father of the gods. Yes, um, yes. the ruler of Olympus, so the, the big, big kahuna. The big he's kahuna, the big kahuna. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. You know, the, the, in the photographs, most of the ones you have of him, his ears are forward, and he's like it's like he's tackling life with vigor and curiosity. And then there's one where he's having a little buck, and and then the other ones, his ears are like, I'm going for it, baby. It's his expressions yeah, are very Zeus-like. He's, there's, there's a confidence there in his babyhood. Is he really like that, or, or am yeah, I misreading very, these pictures? You're not misreading the pictures at all, Helena. Very much so. Um, very forward, confident in everything he does. Um, nothing phases him. And, you know, he's not afraid of anything, or you know, nothing startles him. He's just a very confident little guy um, out there. You know, he and the baby legendary rendition or Rennie kind of lead our playground out there this year. And it's just really cute to watch. Um, he, he's been working on the younger Colt Ringo or um, ring of fire who was born May 6th, trying to get him to introduce in the herd. But right now Ringo's mom's not letting him play too much with the other kids yet, but Zeus has been working on it. One of the things that strikes me, I don't know about you, Helena, but Derek, uh, one of the things that strikes me about these babies and, and, you know, Gypsy Vanners are really a drafty breed, but you can really tell that in the babies and the size of their legs <laughs> when they come out. Yeah, yeah, that is definitely true. I mean, when when they're born, they, they look um, exactly like a Gypsy Vanner should, just in a miniature version. Uh, the heavy bone, and like you mentioned earlier, the, the feathering, uh, a lot of times will have an abundance of mane, even uh, as they're forced firstborn. So, yeah, very identifiable, and, uh, you know, the good breedings, they just hold that uh, trait uh, as they grow. Now, are you guys, do you guys have the vet out, or do you do this all yourself when, when in the birthing process? Have you, have you birthed so many that you do it yourselves? Uh, yeah, or- yeah we, um, we're there for all of the births. Um, and then, uh, depending upon if there was any sort of complications or any cause for concern, um, uh, we have a vet that will come out and do well baby checks and assist if there's a, a need to have any work done. 
Now, I noticed you were most excited about uh, Feathered Gold Impeccable Impression, who is fa- uh, who is w- out of Mickey Finn, right? Correct. Yeah. Why were you most excited about that one? Why? And I don't know much about this. I just know from your emails, I count the exclamation points, and that one had more than any other. So that's why I'm asking. <laughs> Well, and part of the reason for that, it isn't just that he's out of Mickey Finn. He is the first foal out of our mayor, Feathered Gold Jasmine. And both Mickey and Jasmine have been um, extremely accomplished horses in the ring. Jasmine um, was Supreme Champion Halter Horse at the National Championships back in October. Um, She has taken our youth riders, when she was three and four years old, she's taken our youth riders to several high point championships and Helena, you probably know you don't see that that often with a young horse that they're you know taking youth championships. Um, she is just beautiful. He's just beautiful. We've been this foal was all that and more that we expected from these two. Um, not just in the hair and the confirmation, but mm. in his movement, which I know you guys can't see, but pretty soon we'll get some video of him up. He is just everything personality. Movement. It's a combination that we've been wanting to do since some um, Jasmine, who was born on our farm March 20th, five years ago, pretty much um, since she was two. But we don't breed our mares until they're closer to four. So that's one of the reasons we were so excited. And Glenn, he is everything and more that, than what we hoped for with him. Well, I figures I picked the expensive one. That's really what it comes down to here. Um, <laughs> so, so now, sure, Glenn <laughs> and Helena, if you look at the pictures of of uh, of, of this of this colt, and you go to the page. By the way, you can go to featheredgold.com to see all the pictures. Just go to the foals page up at the top the link there, and then you look at Mama. Now, I have seen moms, human moms, after they've given birth, and I'm sorry, they don't. <laughs> their manes are not groomed like this one is after birth. Uh, you know, and that was 12 hours old. That was 12 hours after she had that baby. Did you look and like this she, after Helena? I doubt your oh, name I did. was that great. I saw it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Girlfriend's looking good. <laughs> looking good. And she's retained her girlish figure, too, hasn't you know, she? Yeah, she has. <laughs> very good pregnancy for her. That's funny. Well, this is terrific. I, I assume that these are for sale, and, and you've have you already sold some of these? Um, yes, actually, um, three of them, um, possibly four, but three for sure, have already been claimed by their new families. Um, they'll go home between the ages of four to six months old after they're weaned. We have one going to Las Vegas. We have one going to Kentucky. This year we have one going to Nebraska. And um, we actually have several suitors after Zeus right now, Helena. So you might want to get get to the head of the line. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> the, the, yeah. yeah um, I know. I'm gonna have to cut. <laughs> I think Zeus. I think Zeus would look cut good mine. on the beach there in in Rhode Island. I'll take. Well, you know what? I mean, I'm trying to think of like all the different kinds of things that I could do with these these horses at this day because they're so versatile. I, I. But you know, I would be afraid to get their beautiful feathers all muddied and. and you know, they clean up a lot easier than you might think. Um, we actually. Ours live outside most of the time. People always ask me, do you keep them in to keep them looking that nice? My horses are allowed to be horses. They're out in the field, the mud, whatever they happen to get into. Um, They're only stalled when they're foaling or have babies at their side or if we've just bathed to go to a show. Mm. Um, Otherwise, they're outside. And Jasmine was um, only being stalled at night. I mean, she's a good example, Lena, because she did just foal. She was only being stalled at night. She was outside during the day, and she still looks that good. Well, so the I, care for them is not as um, time-consuming as some people believe it is. Okay, the hair that, is uh, for some quality. reason, I'm not believing that, but I'll, I'll, I'll trust you. <laughs> no, you know what? I do believe it because I have a female St. Bernard who, who has a lot of white on her, and um, she's just always white. And let me, she rolls around in horse poop and mud, and she mm-hmm. definitely gets into it. And uh, everybody's always commenting on how white she is. And so I think that some – Breeds or some, I don't even say breeds, but some animals do a good job at keeping themselves clean. If you let them be natural, like if they're out all the time, you know, 
Yes, right, guys, is. we're and running out of time here. Like that too. <laughs> <laughs> we're running. There you out go. Of- <laughs> See, so it's all about good yeah. care. We're running out of time here. We have to run. But thank you so much for coming back on. If you want to see these pictures, go to featheredgold.com and uh, just check it out. What a, what, what a great group of kids you have and what fun it would be to see them all out there playing together. I, I envy you. Please put up videos. We want to see those too, okay? We Absolutely. certainly will, Glenn. Thank you. Uh, thank right. you. Bye, guys. I say this every time we go to the Feathered Gold website. I, I want babies. I would not have no idea what to do with a baby. I would put it out in a field and look at it and drool a little bit, and it would just sit there and do nothing. Because, <laughs> but but it doesn't stop me from wanting oh, you'd one. Oh, you spoiler rotten is what you'd do. But they are, they're nice to look at. It'd be the fattest baby ever there because you and Grace would be out there feeding it carrots nonstop. I know. I know. And a couple peppermints every now and again. But that's what, you know, but, but, but. I have to say, you know, the the Gypsy Vanners are a very versatile breed. Please don't take what I would do with one as all that they can do. (laughs) I put all my horses out in the field and just let them get fat. Um, But you know what? Whether you have fat horses or skinny horses or what, if you need something for them, you can find it at Equestrian Collections because they literally have the entire universe of equestrian gear at your fingertips. Howdy, everybody. Glenn here from the Horse Radio Network, and I'm speaking to Debbie over at Equestrian Collections with the Equestrian Collections Product of the Week. This is Happy Spring Week, and I wanted to have all of the listeners look at the feet of their veterinarians or their trainers. And what are you going to see on them? Ariat Terrain Boots. These are the go-to comfort shoe for the horse industry. If you... um, they're so comfortable. They have all the good stuff from Ariat inside of them, and they're also uh, good looking. And they come in lace so that you can wear heavy socks, you can wear light socks, you can ride in them, you can walk in them. You can't say that about every boot on the market. Um, this is a tried and true boot, but I wanted to feature it this week because it's in the springtime. You're going to be doing a lot more outside work, and this is the boot to go to. My wife has owned many of these, and they they actually feel when you're wearing them more like a sneaker than a boot, uh, which is which is kind of nice. It you know doesn't give you that stiff boot feeling, and that's why they became so popular in the first place. Uh, and then they have the moisture wicker lining, so your feet don't get as hot. So that does make them a good good summer boot as well. Plus, they come in all kinds of cool colors. Yes, and they also we have another um, boot, the terrain boot that is waterproof. The regular terrain boot is not waterproof, but we do also offer a waterproof boot in the same style. That's right. And they have a bazillion different sizes. So you're going right. to find right. a size to fit your feet, no matter what size you are. But I challenge you to look at your, uh, at your farrier or your um, trainer or your vet's feet and see what they have on them. <laughs> or, or your radio show host here at the Horse Radio <laughs> Network. And that's the Ariat Ladies Terrain Boot. You can find it at equestriancollections.com. Just search for Ariat Terrain Boot, and you'll find it over at equestriancollections.com. <laughs> All right, it is now time for our Tack and Habit segment. We actually combined a Tack and Habit segment with, with, uh, with a guest today because you got really curious. We both did, actually. We're, we're both kind of science weenies, but you're really a science weenie. I, I am a science weenie, yes. I, I, do have, I did go to school for uh, mixed sciences, and I love this stuff. But, you know, I think I'm even a little bit more excited about it because I have used it on myself and my animals and and it works. And I've tried a whole bunch of other things on myself and my animals, and, and it hasn't worked. Now, whether I want to believe so bad that it works, that it worked, or it really works, I don't care. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> well, and I now I does, want to understand fully, I and I want to share too. the technology behind it, because it really is. It's very simple. It's, it's simple physics, but manipulated in a most wonderful way. So, and that's, um, that's Cellient, Cellient, who Cellient. is the product that, or is the ingredient in the Draper products that we've talked about recently on the show. And we just got more curious about what this is and, and why, it, why it exists, you know. And so we, we, we got a referral to the creator of Cellient products, and his name is David, and he is from a company called Halogenics. And we're going to talk to him about uh, how this came to be and and 
all the uses for it now, which is more than just dra- you know more than just horse products. It's getting out there in, into mainstream products as well. So uh, I was glad you you brought this up because it's like let's dig a little deeper. You know what I mean? Let's yep. let's go a little further. Now I hope I understand about half of this. Uh, just saying. Well, just you know. Eat a little something. That'll help you figure it out. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome, David, to Stable Scoop. I am giddy because I am a science geek. Glenn calls me a science weenie, but whatever. (laughs) Um, Salient is the technology behind the miracle. And I call the miracle. I've been using Draper products for just about a year now, and I'm absolutely addicted. I've been using them on my own body, and now I use them on my horses. Uh, Tell us about... In, in the most easy to understand terms for people like Glenn. Thank you. For Glenn. Yes. What is Salient exactly and what does it do to help the body? Uh, Salient is a, a textile that's composed of specific optical ingredients, which are you know minerals and crystals, uh, that has the ability to take the emission from the human body, which is in the far infrared, your body gives off mainly far infrared energy. Uh, there's wavelengths. So, like when you're eight- when we're watching Ghostbusters or something like that, or whatever Ghost Adventures, we're looking at these thermal imaging cameras and we see different colors on their little heat monitors. Right. That's the what. Exactly. That's what a body and, gives off. Okay. Yes, and and those colors are uh, are false colors. You can make them anything you want with a thermal camera, but they're denoting different. Uh, I would say different warmth different uh, frequencies of energy that tend to, you know, vibrate at different speeds. Right. Uh, So the energy coming off the body is considered far infrared, and it peaks at about 9.4 microns. And salient is designed, the particles inside the salient fiber are designed to absorb this energy and then just re-emit it back onto the tissue. And so what we do is we put kind of far infrared therapy uh, on the tissue, which has been proven to, you know, do many things. You so know, it's kind of it like a mirror. It, it, it hits it and sends it back. Yeah, but it's different than a mirror because we use, uh, we use you know, many different optical ingredients. So we do something called broadband excitation, where we don't focus on just one wavelength, just like the sun. The sun offers us many wavelengths for our bodies. You know, right. some are, are, are really good and some aren't the best. And we focus on those wavelengths that are, uh, you know, to shift into those wavelengths that are uh, beneficial for the body. So like and, a prism. You know, what, it, I, yeah, kind of like a prism. We, it, it, the angle that it hits the particle at, it, you know, makes a difference. And the particle itself makes a difference. God, I and wish I had paid more in, attention in high school. What? Right. <laughs> I wish you so paid more attention off, yesterday. <laughs> your body gives off 100 watts of energy at uh, any given time. And that's, that's kind of at rest. Say you ex- the more you exercise, the more wattage your body gives off. So salient is able to, again, that energy would normally be lost to the environment. Uh, salient has found a way to capture that energy, absorb it, and re-emit it back onto the tissue. And you- you know, we've, we have you know, eight clinical studies that have been done uh, that prove the efficacy of you know, uh, what we say of salient, you know, that it has the ability to kind of uh, balance out blood flow. You know, where you're lacking, it might tend to, you know, uh, speed up a little bit or, you know, become more normalized. And, you know, this is what helps bring blood to the area to help fight fatigue, you know, increase strength and endurance. And, you know, that's why horses love it so much is it adds this, it, they become kind of hybrid engines when they use the, uh, the Draper products uh, with salient in them. So I love that easy. analogy, hybrid yeah. engines. Yeah. That's fabulous. Yeah, because what happens is, uh, you know, this energy is normally given off, and horses radiate at, you know, uh, I would use a thermal camera. I could, you know, give you an exact number, but uh, somewhere, you know, in probably the, you know, 14 to 20 micron range as well. And when you have the saddle pad that has the uh, Draper, you know, salient energy product on it, that energy that would normally be lost to the back or causing friction is now used to bathe the body in kind of like a massaging uh, field. And when there's more blood there, that's why the, you know, they don't have the, uh, the sores on their backs as, as they normally get. Now, before you, before Salient um, had teamed up with Draper, had you done any equine studies at all, or was Draper sort of your introduction into the horse market? 
you know, Draper was one of the first, uh, definitely forerunners. You know, you got to give it to them. You know, Kristen is a great lady, and their whole team is really good. Uh, Kat's just wonderful, and these these people are out there for a better cause. You know, they see that the benefits of, of uh, promoting technologies like this. You know, to 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 help wellness, you know, be spread around the uh, the planet. Well, I got to tell you though, time. I am seeing Cellion pop up across across the board in into into mainstream sports. Uh, and did I even see maybe sneakers or a certain company like that? Oh yes, Cellion is used in many different things. Um, you know, and Draper sells a lot of them. You know, the mattress mattress uh, pads, pillows. Uh, sport products, you know, with Reebok uh, and Adidas, uh, you know, and, and many others to come, uh, you know, getting adoptions by, you know, really, really large companies right now. And the benefits are, are being felt. Uh, and again, we have the science to back up, you know, what we say Salient does. And, now, uh, it's, it's you invented it, how long ago did you, did you come up with this? In the 1990s, uh, my my grandmother had bad knees and and I always wanted to develop something that would help her knees, so I I went out and started uh, researching things and uh, I was I uh, came in touch with a uh, a a technology that I was able to extrude uh, things from and realized that uh, I could make this better and I, I worked with physicists and. Uh, chemists and we developed ways to you know harness the body's energy more efficiently and effectively now was it an overnight hit or has it taken a while to catch on oh no no it's definitely taken a while you know it's like uh, the tv you know the, the tv it took a while to catch on but right now it's it's really being sought after by large large companies because you know the science is there now you know there's there are uh, already you know fda approved lights for for wound healing for pain relief uh, for creation of uh, collagen in the skin. So we just take that technology, you know, out of the uh, light socket and let the body power it. Um, you know, it's really that simple. The body is an emitter, salient is an absorber and re-emitter, and we just pick the wavelengths uh, that are most, you know, effectively used to help create homeostasis in the body. You know what that and, means, and, Helena, and, and, is that he's no longer eating peanut butter and jelly and he's eating ham and cheese now. That's what that means. Well, how do you relate this to food? Because, I know. no, what how I mean is his food? product is taking off. He's no longer has to eat peanut butter and jelly every day. He's now graduated up. Oh, he's graduated uh, to yes, ham and cheese. He's up to ham and cheese now because he can afford it. So that's yeah, what that see, means. There you go. <laughs> Note the food analogy. He will, everything goes back to food with Glenn. David, I am so happy for you, though. Food. If you can make a pan with salient in it, he'll buy it so that he can, <laughs> right. he, he, he can There's the next idea right there for you. homeostasis in his food. <laughs> Actually, no, actually to be honest, to be honest with you, they do. What you need to get is a far infrared grill, and they, <laughs> they have, have them. Uh, yeah. they have they have they have infrared grills now that uh, cook meat and things like that uh, way more efficiently, and it's juicier. So, Glenn, there you go. You <laughs> this is true. Go this with is the true. infrared. It's, been, it, it's surrounding us everywhere. From hey, our, we we are so happy for our, you. Our and sleep I'll... to our you know sport products and into our cooking. Uh, appliances it is so hard when you start a business and when you create a product that that people just don't understand because it's hard to explain um and, and it takes a long time to get it out there and we've seen that with so many different businesses even here in the horse world that we're so excited that when it finally kicks in and people start to get it that must be it, you must be elated that it's getting to the point it is after all this hard work oh yeah it's, it's very exciting for our company and uh you know, we look forward to really continuous growth, and we, you know, we we branch out into uh, other aspects of life as well. You know, we uh, we are currently creating products that uh, are mechanically different uh, to the body as well. So they, you know, they help cool it, they help heat it, they help dry it. You know, uh, things like that. It's physics, so really. I mean, it's, well. it's 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 physics. It's it is mechanics. It's not necessarily. Um, there's no magic or mystery. No, I mean, the magic, magic and the mystery is in how you apply it and how you develop it. But, you know, if you – that's for anybody who's still in school, take your physics class and pay attention because, you know, it, it, it could help make your horse more comfortable or – I mean, this thing – this stuff is just taking off. And yet, truly, I mean, David, wouldn't you agree that the science behind it is actually quite straightforward? Oh, it's very straightforward. It's, you know, there's, there's many, many peer-reviewed published papers on the effects of light therapy. 
you know, light therapy has been used for, you know, you know, many years. I mean, uh, the Egyptians used prism rooms to treat people. Uh, so it's, it's, it's gone back many, many years. And, uh, you know, Niels Fenson won the Nobel Prize in the early 1900s for treatment of tuberculosis and smallpox by using red light. Uh, so, oh, yes, and, the, you know, now the science is, uh, you know, people are ready for this because it's completely non-invasive. You can, you can try a, a, a draper band and you can, you know, put that on something that seems to be bothering you and you might wake up uh, feeling more balanced. Uh, you know, that's, that's really a positive thing for people. What's been the thing, if you have critics, what, what's been the one thing that they keep hopping on that you'd like to address? Uh, you know, they, they don't have a lot to pop on these days. We have, we have uh, done so many clinical studies, and we've proved it out in so many different ways. I think the story, just how to tell the story, is, is, is uh, you know, of, of how it works. And, you know, people have to realize that the body is an energy source. You know, we have devices that we've created that, you know, you can put your hand on, and the energy from your hand makes electrical current. You know, the, you can put something on your arm, and the energy from your arm runs a motor. Uh, you know, our fabrics, you can put certain wavelengths of light on them and watch and, and see it absorb these wavelengths of light, you know, with uh, thermometers and things like this, with infrared thermometers. So a lack uh, of understanding but, of the way the human body actually works, or exactly, that part of the human exactly. body, yeah. Okay. And, and, you know, pe- people have to understand that, you know, they can't uh, survive without the sun. And so our bodies are, are light beings, and we need to put, you know, we need to uh, embrace that and realize that, you know, our bodies are giving off a lot of energy. And some of those, you know, the body gives off visible light. It's been proven at institutes of, uh, of biophotonics in Austria. They have spectrophotometers that can, can see uh, wavelengths of light coming off the body. The mm. DNA emits, you know, ultraviolet light. The healthier the DNA is, the tighter it is. And that's called a ligase state, and it, it's hold on to its light so it can use it for chemical and biological processes. As the DNA becomes unwound, it's called a helicase state, and it gives off a lot of ultraviolet light, and that should be a, a sign that somebody may be sick. Um, you know, there's so many different technologies these, these days to show what we're doing. Uh, we're, we're excited about something called a GDV camera which was developed by a Russian physicist by the name of uh, Konstantin Korotkov. Uh, we use this technology to quantify salient fabrics. Um, it tests the human biofield by taking the emission of all ten fingertips, and every part of your fingertips corresponds with a different meridian system. And how the energy is coming from this system lets us know how that system is, is functioning. And it's very, very accurate. There's peer-reviewed data on it. And uh, you can see the benefits of Salient by using a technology like this. You, you, know um, what's, you know what's interesting about this, David? I have a co-host on the driving radio show, Dr. Wendy Ying, who's a traditional Chinese, uh, is a veterinarian, but also a traditional Chinese medicine uh, doctor. And the, it, it's so interesting because I've learned so much about traditional Chinese medicine that goes back thousands of years. And they've been talking about this for thousands of years. Oh, it's the chi force. You know, we just we just help channel your chi. That's exactly right. I mean, it's it's what they have been talking about. You know, for thousands of years. That that up until recently, you know, uh, us in the quote unquote modern world has been saying was bunk, and now is proving to be all true. Well, the key word there is proving because now yeah. we have. They're saying that they've got the clinical studies to support what what you know this medicine has been has known for thousands of years but you know we're we're modern people and we don't believe it until somebody can show us a double blind study over it so that's right you know the double blind studies are great but also the equipment that's been developed these days to sense very fine things and uh you know they, they they've had sensors say they they've developed a sensor that you can put on a tree from in one continent and when a when there's a fire in a forest on another continent, there will be a reaction on the trees on the opposing continent. I mean, that's how sensitive things are getting. Uh, well, so with, with that in mind, you know, it's, it's great to be able to show, you know, how our fabrics are absorbing this energy and remitting this energy. We're able to detect these things now. I, I could go on. I, I could just pick your brain for hours and hours because this geek speak really just gets me going. <laughs> but um, we're running out of time here. So what I want to do is send people to the Salient website so they can actually dig through there and find a lot of this information on their own. What is the website for Salient? It's uh, Salient.com, www.salient.com. 
Okay. And if you can't remember that, folks, that we will post a link to it at the Stable Scoop website. Uh, I just want to say a big thank you to David for joining us today. And I definitely encourage you to go uh, go to Salient, look up the information because it, it's absolutely so simple. It's so self-explanatory. They have great visuals for helping you understand how the technology works. And it's great for your horse as well as yourself. I can say that with 100% confidence because I've used their the Salient technology on myself as well as my horse i i love it i absolutely love it and believe in it so um and to find those uh, products you just go to drapertherapies.com drapertherapy.com i got to tell you draper is a forerunner and uh they will provide you with the finest you know salient products out there well that was very interesting i i, I probably understood about half of it helena but i I'm, i was with it most of the way that's okay. I, I, yeah, well, just look at the pictures, Glenn. Okay, good. I'll go to their website and look at the pictures. That'll help me. And of course, this segment was the Attack and Habit segment is always brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products. Regular listeners to the show know that we love Kentucky Performance Products. And that's an easy thing to do because Kentucky Performance Products stand behind their products and they believe in them. Your complete satisfaction is guaranteed. If you are unsatisfied with any of their products, they will gladly refund your money. Does your horse or pony get fat on air alone? Is he living in a dry lot or turned out with a muzzle? Can't feed him more than a handful of grain and some hay? Then you need microphase. Microphase is a great way to ensure your horse or pony gets all of the nutrients he needs to stay healthy without adding calories to his diet. Microphase contains the vitamins and trace minerals not found in grass or hay, and your horse will eat it right out of your hand. You can learn more about Microphase and all of the products from Kentucky Performance Products by visiting kppusa.com. That's kppusa.com. Check out Microphase. Wow, Glenn. That was a lot. (laughs) Yes, it was fun. We talk about babies, we talk about technology, and I got to look at pretty pictures. That's really what the show is all about, isn't it? We talk about goofy, gushy baby stuff, some geeky stuff, look at pictures, blah, blah, blah. Have someone else do most of the talking, and then we go, cut, That's and it. we're done. That's it. That's exactly That's our right. job. That's great. Yeah, it's a great job. And we'll do it again next week. Uh, yeah, that's hopefully we uh, all our listeners will join us because... Uh, well, what do we have? Do we know what we have? Yes, uh, we're going to have part two next week in the series that we did with Michael Diamond on tack, uh, the, uh, uh, tack Through History. Yes. And if you remember right, he is partner and vice president of marketing at English Riding Supply, and he really has been involved in the tack business as it's grown up in here in the United States. And we're going to get to part two of that next week and really go into modern tech and, and what it was involved in developing that here in the United States as well. So we're going to be doing part two of that next week. And I'm sure we'll have lots more to talk about. I can, you know, we'll maybe have more details for you, too, on the, some of the changes going on here at the Horse Radio Network that we're so excited about. And uh, please go over and check out the new uh, venting and dressage radio shows. You can find them all at horseradionetwork.com. Say goodbye, Helena. Oh, goodbye, Helena.